there's increasing legislative pressure within the United States, within the European Union, mandates, directives about, about AI and uh, ethical use or level of trust and uh, opt-in, opt-out. There's all sorts of different facets of this, uh, maybe even building off of our the data protection legislation and regulations like GDPR and the California, uh, uh, different versions of the California uh, Consumer Privacy Act. Uh, what are some data pra- or best practices for ensuring that backup and storage systems for AI data remain compliant with these this evolving regulatory environment and governance requirements? Uh, Jamal, I'm going to go to you first on that one. Yeah, so look, AI does come with all of these complex compliance demands. Not only do we have to think about the privacy ones like the GDPR, the PDPL, the CCPA, but we also have to think about the EU AI Act, and we need to make sure that we practice proactive governance to avoid these hefty fines. Three things that we can do. We can think about machine-readable policies. So we can actually implement systems where compliance rules are machine-readable, which means that we can have automated checks for things like cross-border data transfers or any sensitive data that we might be processing. We can create privacy by divine principles by embedding governance controls at every stage of the data lifecycle, and we design the systems to flag and act on any non-compliant behavior. And we can also bring in audit-ready explainability tools. Use AI explainability tools to make sure your data models and processes are transparent and easy to demonstrate during audits. So the things I like to think about is how often are your data governance policies updated to reflect the new regulations? I just mentioned PDPL, which came into force just a few months ago. And can you backup or can your backup system automatically encrypt or anonymize that data to meet those regulatory requirements? So that raises a couple of interesting points, and I'm going to drill down on one of them specifically, which was which was uh, personal information, you know, which is a subset of the world of sensitive information. But the ability to identify uh, where there is personal information in 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 your stored data uh, uh, repositories is much more complicated than just running a query and on a on a structured database and looking for all the instances where where say rick or demetrius's uh, name comes up uh it's really complicated there's lots of uh embedding of of personal information in documents emails those types of things and and i'd like to to gauge your your uh, uh you know solicit your your feedback on on the ways that that we can both uh, uh protect against AI powered attacks, as well as how can we make use of AI to support compliance and governance? So Rick, I'm gonna to go to you on that one. So I really like what Jamal said, David. And one thing I'll add is that I've been in this business a long time, not as long as Eric, but what I will say is that, you know, no product or solution is 100% compliant. It is completely predicated on how it is implemented, how it is audited, period. I used to work in a bank. That's how I got through, by knowing that. But one thing I will say, when it comes to the AI spin, I think we have to live off the land and, and basically do our own red team drill. We, we built it. We need to go try to tear it apart. We need to understand where are the holes in the crack because in the solution. Because you know what? The threat actors are going to find it. And that is more important than compliance, right? So I would just kind of give those life lessons like that because i feel it gets really specific really quick but that mindset will really transcend nearly any scenario and and i I also just wanted to add in one one simple thing that the audience can do and that's tagging and also classifying your data and setting that up on an automated policy right so when when your data you know hits your production system and you're ready to protect that data and you're ready to start backing it up, setting up some tagging and some some policy creation in order to classify that data appropriately is something super simple and easy that you can use, utilize automation and AI to do automatically for you so you won't have to worry about it. And then, and then you can use lifecycle management to start storing that data in the proper uh, storage accounts and then start aging and expiring that data out appropriately so you can also start to save cost as well so that's just one one super simple thing that that the audience can do if you're not doing that today i definitely recommend that you start tagging and and, and classifying your data 
just from a data privacy perspective. So I'm glad that you jumped in there because I was going to go to you anyway. Uh, and to, 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 to ask specifically about this type of thing, which is at, in a more general sense, which is not about the specifics of tagging and classifying, but rather how can we make use of tagging and classifying for, for automating policy compliance? And how do we use that to define policies in a way that, that allow that to be uh, manageable and governed from a from an enterprise perspective so you know I'm, i think what you started to say is going to tie a lot of what you guys were saying together because it's going to focus on on both automation on governance on compliance and and the ability to take take advantage of that in terms of a of a policy perspective so i'm going to go back to you demetrius how do you, how how do your clients use that capability of tagging to to deploy data policies and, and so, as as I mentioned earlier, it's it's pretty much a team sport. So no, no one product is going to deem you automatically compliant, right? So if you utilize a multitude of solutions, then if you if you look at those solutions, they're all going to have out of the box preset compliance knobs that you can turn, right? So if you want to uh, uh, comply with CCPA or GDPR. Or the new thing now in the EU is DORA, Digital Operational Resilience Act. So, and so that's going into effect on January the 17th of 2025. So financial services institutions, they're all gearing up right now to comply with DORA. And I'm not talking DORA the Explorer, <laughs> but it is really about financial services uh, organizations and companies that are in that ecosystem are applying or complying with these different articles that will make sure that your infrastructure and your incident management and your monitoring and your reporting is all set up to properly provide the information that's necessary when the auditors come knocking on your door. So of course you want to make sure AI and, and artificial intelligence and and policy management and creation of all those different policies are set up in order to do that. But you have to utilize a comprehensive view of making sure that you're also leveraging things like your SIM and your SOAR, your XDR, and your, all, the, all of your other cybersecurity platforms in order to make sure that they, they are also in line with what you're using to, to back up that data and recover your data just in case you need to uh, recover your data if there's some type of mishap or ransomware type attack. 